Um, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for being here. And well, in my talk, I will discuss the results of our work in collaboration with Paolo Perinotti and Alessandro Tosini. What we did essentially was to introduce uh, a novel definition of entropy within the framework of operational probabilistic theories. And it is a definition that to some extent generalizes the notion of entropies from classical and quantum information theories. In doing so, we took inspiration from such theories. In the classical case, the function that describes, that measures the amount of information that is stored in a classical system is the Shannon entropy. On the one hand, one can derive this formula by setting uh, a bunch of reasonable axioms that a proper measure of information should satisfy. But the full understanding of this function as a measure of information is given by the noiseless coding theorem, proved by Shannon in 1948, uh, a theorem which essentially states, in a, uh, roughly speaking, that the Shannon entropy is equal to the classical information content of a source. Namely, it is equal to the smallest number of bits per symbol that can be, uh, that, that, that uh, are needed to store the, a classical information source. In quantum theory, the same result holds for the von Neumann entropy as proved by Benjamin Schumacher in 1995, who uh, showed in particular that the von Neumann entropy is equal to the quantum information content, where the qubits replace the, the, the bits. Well, within the context of generalized probabilistic theories, the Shannon function has been used to uh, define three different notions of entropy that are not equivalent. Uh, the measurement entropy, which is the minimal uncertainty associated with all the possible measurements that can be, can be performed on a state row. The maximal accessible information, which is obtained by maximizing over all the possible, uh, maximizing the accessible information over all the possible convex decomposition of a state row. And finally, the decomposition entropy, which is essentially the smallest uncertainty that is associated with uh, the pure convex decomposition of the state row. Well, as I said before, these uh, uh, different notions of entropy are defined in terms of the Shannon function or one of its derived quantities. What we did, our proposal is to uh, take the operational interpretation given by the noiseless coding theorem and uh, consider it as a definition of entropy. In practice, we define a quantity that we call information content, that is the smallest amount of resources that are needed in order to store an information source. Well, once we uh, have defined this quantity, we can also answer an old question uh, that is the following one. Does one of the entropies that have been already introduced uh, satisfy a sort of generalized noiseless coding theorem? The answer turns out to be no, as I will show you at the end. And okay, so since the task that uh, is behind our idea is the compression task, let me review it in the quantum case. A quantum source is described by uh, an ensemble of pure states, which gives rise to a signal described by a density matrix. And after n usages of the source, what we find is a, a local signal that is given by a tensor state. But this tensor state can be obtained as the uh, marginal of a pure entangled state. And the compression task in this sense can be seen, in the quantum case, can be seen as the task of um, transmitting uh, entanglement in a faithful way while using as few qubits as possible, okay? So here E and D are, uh, okay, let's see. Here E and D are two quantum channels that store the n copies of A on which the local signal is supported onto m copies of, of qubits. Um, now, if we fix the, um, the threshold for the error computed by using the entanglement fidelity, uh, the performance of a compression scheme is given by the rate, which is the, small, which is, uh, the number of qubits that um, the protocol uses divided by the number of usages of the source. But the task is to use as few qubits as possible, so we have to minimize this number of qubits. And the quantum information content is then defined as the asymptotic limit of an infinitely uh, um, larger number of usages and uh, the limit of vanishing error. This is the information content in quantum theory. Um, and this is the definition that we, we want to generalize to the framework. 
Another lesson that we, that we can uh, learn from quantum theory is that, in this sense, preserving quantum information is uh, equivalent to preserving entanglement. Namely, <clears throat> in a compression task is not only important to preserve preparations, but it is also important to preserve the entanglement between the end copies of the system A and a possible remote system. Okay. So, we want to generalize this task to the framework, so let me describe it in a very brief uh, way. Uh, the primitive notions of an operational probabilistic theories, uh, theory is, uh, are those of systems, tests, and events. Systems are uh, diagrammatically, diagrammatically represented by wires, the tests and events are represented by boxes, and they correspond to transformations that can uh, both change the state of a system and change the system, and change, uh, yes, the system itself, okay? There are two special kinds of events that can be defined, the, the, the notion of state and effect, and um, one can also compose tests to obtain new tests in two possible ways. Using sequential composition that corresponds to perform uh, an experiment one after, after the other, or using parallel composition in which, uh, by means of, uh, uh, we can define new systems to obtain multipartite systems, and uh, parallel composition of tests that corresponds to two different parties that perform the uh, experiments in separated labs. On top of this operational structure, one has the probabilistic one uh, by associating a probability to, uh, with each closed circuit. And these probabilities are uh, conditioned by the choice of the test that form the, the circuit, and they must be clearly normalized when we sum over all the possible outcomes we must obtain one. Okay. So, Time for thinking. The first problem that we have to cope with is how do we measure information in a generic OPT? In classical and quantum theories, we do this by using bits and qubits respectively. But it might be the case that for a generic OPT, the equivalent system of the bit or of the qubit does not exist. So, Let's see how we manage to, to set um, a class of theories in which information can be measured. The first notion that we need is that of asymptotic equivalence. And we say that two systems are asymptotically equivalent if, uh, in the first place, for any K1, there exists an M2, such that the K1 copies of a system Q1 can be isometrically encoded in, K2 copy, in M2 copies of, of the system Q2. Moreover, if we take the smallest number M2 that does this job, we also assume that the limit of the ratio uh, of M2 divided by K1 exists when we send K1 to infinity. We require that this, that this situation is also symmetric so that we can go from Q2 to Q1 in, in, uh, in the same way. And finally, we require that, that the two limits are one the inverse of the other, okay? With this notion in our hand, we can say what is a digitizable OPT. That is the class of theories in which we can define the information content. An OPT is digitizable if, in the first place, there exists the equivalent system, at least to, if there exists at least one system that is equivalent to the bit or the qubit of quantum theory. Namely, if there exists a reference system such that for any system A of the theory, we can find an integer M such that A can be isometrically encoded on M copies of Q of this uh, operational bit, let's say. Secondly, if there are two such systems, we require them to be asymptotically equivalent. So this is digitizability. Well, now that we have defined a class of theories in which we define the information content, we have another problem that we have to, to face. Namely, how do we generalize the entanglement fidelity from quantum theory, okay? In uh, doing this, we have to, um, we have to say how we model the output of, of a source. A source in, in, a in a digitizable OPT is described by a system A and a state on this system. After n usages, what we obtain is a, a local signal that is the parallel composition of the same state row uh, with itself, runtimes. 
And the compression scheme, when we fix n, is simply a pair of channels that encodes the n copies of A, on which the local signal is supported on, a given number of copies of, of a new bit of the, of the digitizable theory. So, in the first place, the n copies of A must be correlated with the remote system. So, we consider uh, dilations of, of the local signal, namely uh, states whose marginal is uh, the local signal uh, itself. Moreover, this dilation might be prepared in, a, um, in some way by means of a refinement, which is a collection of states whose sum uh, is the dilation psi. And therefore, we model the output of a source in this way as a, as a refinement of a possible dilation of the local signal. Therefore, the error is computed by using the average error when we apply uh, our compression scheme. Since we want to take into account all the possible way in which the dilation is prepared, uh, we consider a soup over all the possible refinements. And uh, since we want to take into account all the possible ways in which uh, the end copies of A are uh, correlated with a remote system, we take also a soup over all the possible dilation psi. This defines the figure of merit that we use to generalize the, the entanglement fidelity. Okay, we are now ready uh, to define the information content because we have uh, defined a class of theories in which we can do that, and we have a way to assess the error of a compression scheme. So, an epsilon compression scheme is a pair of maps uh, such that uh, the error does not exceed the threshold epsilon. And the information content is defined as the smallest achievable compression rate, just as in quantum theory. Namely, as the, uh, the double limit of, of, uh, of, the mean, of the smallest compression rate for n and epsilon fixed. Well, it's, uh, we, we have proved that, sorry, we have proved that this quantity is well defined. In particular, what is the role of asymptotic equivalence? Well, um, when we have a physical quantity and we, when we change the unit of measure that we use to, to, to measure it, the, the values scale according to a multiplicative factor. This is true also for the information content, and this is uh, guaranteed by the asymptotic equivalence condition that we have on a digitizable theory. That's why we uh, define this, uh, this notion. Well, so we have studied several features of this definition. In the first place, we, we showed that in quantum theory, it reduces to, to the von Neumann entropy uh, by showing that uh, the, the, the figure of merit that we defined collapses to the entanglement fidelity. We also proved that it is subadditive namely that the information content of a bipartite system is smaller or equal to the information content, to the sum of the information content of the uh, subsystems, okay. We also show that it is invariant under reversible uh, operation. I want to stress the fact that these uh, properties are derived from the definition of the information content as, um, as a compression rate. We don't rely on specific mathematical functions that can be used to, to compute it. Okay, we also investigated the relationship, okay, between, uh, between the purity of states and uh, our definition. In quantum theory, we know that the information content is equal to the von Neumann entropy, though, so it is zero if and only if the state is pure. Now, consider the, in particular the implication from the right to the left. We found that this is related to a property that uh, an OPT may or may not encompass, that is purity of parallel composition of states. This tells that uh, a theory satisfies this property if for any pair of systems and for any uh, pair of pure states on these systems, uh, the parallel composition of these two states are still, is still pure. It is worth considering this property because there are examples of theories in which this can be violated. So what we proved is that this property, together with the essential uniqueness of purification, implies that for any few states, the information content is zero. Remarkably, a sort of converse is also true, in the sense that uh, we found that in a theory in which for any few states, the information content is zero, 
then purity of parallel composition of states must fall. Okay. Well, we are almost at the end. Here is the counterexample to, to the conjecture I described at the beginning, at the beginning of the talk. Uh, in this theory, we proved that um, that was proposed in this paper uh, for other purposes. Uh, we proved that our definition is not equivalent to the other ones that have been already introduced in the literature. So the peculiarity of this theory is that when you compose pure state, E and J, uh, you uh, obtain um, a mixture. So this theory is an example of a coherent theory in which, um, in which um, purity of parallel composition of states does not hold. We proved that this theory is digitizable and we took as uh, operational bit the, the, the system with the smallest dimension, with the dimension two, which is the equivalent of the bit. This is a classical theory in the sense that um, the, the, the set of state of every system is a simplex, so every state can be described in terms of a probability distribution. And we proved that, that the information content is this functional formula, which is a function of the Shannon entropy of the state, but it is not equal to the Shannon entropy of the state. In particular, there is an overhead, which is due to the violation of, of, of the purity of parallel composition of states, because every time that we compose the, the state row that describes the source with itself, we obtain additional mixture that in the asymptotic limit leaves this uh, plus one, essentially. We also computed the other entropies in uh, the value of the other entropies in this theory, and they are all equal to the Shannon entropy exactly. Um, and so we, we, we see that uh, in this, this theory is an example in which our definition uh, deviates from, from the other entropies already uh, defined. So we are at the conclusions now. We, we have given a definition of information content for finite dimensional digitizable OPTs. Um, we have studied its properties and the relation between our definition and the purity of states. We have shown that uh, our definition is not equivalent to those that have been already introduced in the, in the literature, but there are still open questions on the table. We have not been able to prove from the definition that uh, the information content is additive, or, and, and we, have been able, we haven't been able to prove that it is concave. And another open question now is under which conditions does the information content match one of, uh, of, the, of the entropies? So uh, now I'm open, I'm here for questions, and thank you. Other questions? Hi, uh, Hi, thanks for the talk. I would like to ask you when you are defining this analog of the entanglement fidelity, can you, uh, can you speak louder, please? Ah, yeah, sorry. When you define this uh, generalization of the entanglement fidelity, uh, what is the norm? You have the norm that you are subtracting these refinements, if I'm Ah, uh, wait, um, you yeah, mean? It's a bit before. Yeah, right there. Okay. So this last norm for D is what? Is it the trace norm or is it diamond norm? In the quant in qu no, this is the, in quantum theory, this is the trace norm because we are speaking, okay. we are talking about states. Yes. Uh, in, uh, I have an additional, wait, I have a slide on this maybe. Okay, it's okay. defined this way. Uh, it is, in quantum theory, this uh, definition corresponds to an alternative characterization of the trace uh, class norm. Okay. I don't know if you, it, 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 it essentially it is uh, connected to the success probability in a discrimination protocol. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't okay. Know. okay. Okay, thanks, thank you. Are there other questions? Hi, thanks for the talk. So you had this uh, assumption that if your pure state is composed to be pure states, then your, your metric uh, works or has this nice property. Um, are you sort of saying that if your theory does not have this property, uh, then... Can you speak louder because I'm a little bit there. Ah, um, are you saying that if your uh, theory does not have this property that pure states compose to pure states, that mm -hmm. it does not have like a good notion of this information? 
Uh, you mean, uh, sorry. You mean this theory? Uh, no, I think a bit earlier. Uh, yeah, that, that one. Okay. Yes. Can you repeat now the question? I'm, I'm deaf, so. Yes, so if you don't have this assumption that ah, purity yeah. of parallel composition, okay. is, is your notion of information then not well defined or not, it's, um, it's just not nice? Yes, there is no problem with the definition if you don't have, if you don't have uh, purity of parallel composition states. It's, it, mm, why you think that it might be not well defined? Have you some clue about that? There is no problem with uh, with this. The problem, the, the two problems are uh, the possibility to encode all the system in an array of a reference systems, a reference system, and uh, generalize entanglement fidelity to theories in which you don't have, for instance, purification, just classical theory, and local tomography in particular. So, okay, so let me maybe. Um the direction in a different direction. So could you say that this is a operational derivation or an operational interpretation of this axiom of purity of parallel composition? Well, in, indeed, this fact, uh, um, the fact that the last implication, um, if you negate this, it means that uh, the violation of a purity of parallel composition of states implies the existence of at least one pure state that has non-vanishing information content. So in this sense, um, the violation of this property means that you cannot say at this point that having a system in a pure state corresponds to having maximal knowledge on the system. So in this sense, uh, it is uh, another way in which we can think of purity of parallel composition of states, this, this, the property of being zero on every pure state for the information content. So don't okay, know if this answer to, to your question. Yes, okay, thank you. Are there more questions? Okay, uh, maybe I'll ask a question. So, um, I mean, I guess this is just a follow up to the previous question. Uh, so when you sort of argued that the bilocal classical theory doesn't, so you, it doesn't satisfy the purity of yeah. parallel composition, right? And um, so what's the, uh, so there's a sense in which it's, it's not classical information theory, right? Like because uh, you, um, you, you do not satisfy that, that equivalence for the, the information yeah. content being zero for all pure yeah. states and purity of parallel composition. So what's the, like, I, I was just wondering if the only purpose of this is to come up with a counter example, you, I, uh, or are there independent reasons to uh, study these bilocal classical theories? Uh, wait, can you repeat the last part? Of the so part? is the only purpose of it to no, the, come no, no, up with sorry, a the, example, or? Actually, the theory was proposed two years ago, but mm -hmm. we haven't already defined the information content. So um, the purpose of, of, of this theory was to, um, uh, to show that essentially also in classical theory, th there can be theories that are classical in the sense that all the systems are, uh, uh, have a set of states that is a simplex with the pure states being perfectly discriminable, but with entanglement. Because one can s prove, let's say, that uh, the two states, ij plus and ij minus are entangled in the sense that they are not separable with respect to this compositional law. Okay, and um, okay, and, and so, so this was independently studied and then you found this property of, of, of yes, the theory. Yes, I, I took this, uh, this theory and I, okay. I used it as a counterexample to. Okay, are there other sort of interesting examples of these digitizable kind of GP3s? That, um, I mean, you presented like this one example, right? But other than classical and quantum. Uh, well, there is a class of theories that are called minimal uh, which, have be, which uh, has been uh, recently introduced in the literature, that are theories in which you restrict the set of states, uh, the set of transformations, sorry, in a very severe way, in the sense that the only allowed transformations of this theory are preparations, states, observations, and permutations of wires. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I think that if you have uh, such a theory with uh, more than uh, one type of system, it, you cannot get uh, rid of the system on the left with uh, an isometric encoding, mm -hmm. if you can only permute the systems. Okay. I have to prove it, but I think that this might be a, an example of, an, of a non-digitizable theory. Um, so you can see that digitizability is made of two parts. The second one is quite, uh, it, it is quite difficult to figure out an example that violates the second uh, item, while the first item can be maybe violated in this, this way. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.